Hey everyone, I am Dan O'Callaghan and welcome to Do Art With Dan. I was leaning towards doing a fan art piece of Spider-Man. Everything about New York is cool and exciting. The opportunities and, you know, the action. Hey everyone, welcome to Do Art With Dan. I'm Dan O'Callaghan and today I'm gonna help you to draw the best Spider-Man that you can. And I wanna start this video off by saying that we're gonna do this through me showing you how I try to do the best Spider-Man art that I can. I have sort of a six step process of getting through doing some really nice Spider-Man art and I thought we'd just go through that step by step and I'd share that with you and if you've got any comments about or questions about uh, what we talk about in this video then yeah drop them below and I want to do whatever I can to help you guys make Spider-Man art that you're really happy with and you enjoy making. Without further ado, let's get into it. Step one, get inspired. Over the last couple of nights, I actually watched Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse and I watched Spider-Man Far From Home. And I had a lot of fun watching them. I always forget just how awesome they are. Of course, I've looked at some covers, some old comic book covers of the Spider-Man comics that I used to read as a kid. It, it got that excitement and that, that joy that I have for the character of Spider-Man. Uh, built back up into my mind and so um, yeah thoroughly inspired and excited to do some Spider-Man art today. Step two, because of Spider-Man's physique and his uh, movements and how he leaps around New York City, I try to do some gestural drawing, just maybe a couple of pages. I downloaded a couple of uh, parkour videos from this stock site art grid but just the parkour videos were a bit so-so. What I would advise is just to go out onto YouTube and just look it up. Those parkour videos or gymnastics or even like skateboarding and whatnot, when guys are doing like big tricks on vert and like up way up in the sky above the ramps. The thing about Spider-Man though is that he has quite unique poses usually. Actually, in the sense they're uniquely Spider-Man poses and it can be tricky uh, trying to find an original Spider-Man pose because I mean there are over isn't there over a thousand issues of Spider-Man and like you know every pose that you can think of has been executed in the films and whatnot but yeah that's okay I think it's still valuable to look at some real world references and see hey does that have a Spider-Man look to it and I think uh, for me it's having the knees above his waist that's uh, really distinctly Spider-Man look and having his um, at least one arm up in the air and having another arm out in front it's about introducing really dynamic poses so I'm gonna explore that with some gestural drawing right now and I'll talk through it and yeah then we'll move on to the next step all right I'm looking at a couple of poses here and I mean they're on Google so if you want to find them I've just looked in Cool parkour images, and bam, there they are. These illustrations in no way have to be perfect at this stage. You're just trying to get a feel for how this character is moving. And obviously when you're looking up these references, try to find characters who have that lean musculature of Spider-Man, who have a similar physique. This guy's wearing pants, so it makes it a bit tricky. I might as well just draw the pants. Don't try to draw as if he's not, you know, as if it's skin tight. Just draw what I'm saying at this point. Uh, if I can find a photo reference who's wearing something a bit more Spider-Man-esque, then I'll go ahead and draw that. But at this point, just draw through objects and just draw what you see in the photo reference for your gestural drawing. Something else to keep in mind uh, when you're doing these gestural drawings is trying not to do like too many scratchy lines. Uh, like I'm doing it a little bit. I'm trying to. I guess that's part of this exercise. Is if you do have these sorts of habits, you're 
trying to scratch those habits out. But what I mean by scratchy lines is, you know, as I'm drawing this arm, don't do this, you know, I'm sort of faking it a bit there, but don't like go over lines again and again, just draw the line um, in one big swooping motion if you can. That's, you know, the better way to practice. And if it doesn't look right, you can always go back and draw that again. Uh, but the scratchy line thing, it can just... Ugh, sorry. <laughs> it can make things a bit tricky. It's just not, it's just not an efficient way to illustrate. And uh, you'll build much more confidence if you can try and push yourself to do things in that uh, sweeping gestural fashion. I'm gonna fill this page up and I'll, let's just time lapse through that a little bit, huh? And we'll get on to the next step. I'm just going to quickly do a couple of hand poses for reference. Of course, doing a full body, you know, gestural pose is great. Uh, but if you can't get the hands right of Spider-Man thwipping about, uh, it, it's going to be subpar. So uh, I'm just going to quickly do some gestural drawing of my hand trying to do some Spidey poses. small from my imagination gesture drawings of, of people jumping about and swinging about and then we'll get on to that next step all right here we go and I'm with I'll just talk to you about this a little bit with the gestural drawings here I just want to give them more direction like what why are they leaping or jumping you know so I'm just gonna have this guy sort of uh, He's flinging across the sky. It's actually more of a round like that direction. Yeah, up, up like that. And it's not so much about like good illustrations here. I mean, look at them, they're these tiny little things. It's just about, uh, and, and you know, they're so crude really. Um, but what it's really about here is just activating those sorts of compositions and those sorts of movements in your mind and in your imagination. We're going to look at proportions, establishing the proportions that you want for your Spider-Man, uh, establishing the style that you want to go with as well. I'll draw another one here and I'll just show an example of the differences in proportions that you can, you can strive for. So the sort of regular Spider-Man hero proportions, and this will help you when you go to do your final art piece of Spider-Man, just um, how you want it to pan out how you want it to look so let's just put sort of a flat surface here we're not gonna have him doing anything fancy we're just gonna have him sort of walking along
that uh, uh, conceive of what you want the story of this illustration to be. With those uh, drawings of Spider-Man that I did previously, they were just sort of pin-up images. They were just him swinging through the city. There was no story to it really much at all. To enhance your uh, Spider-Man piece, to make it the best that you can, I'm the way that I'm going to make it the best that I can is by going through this process uh, of coming up with a story behind the artwork. And that can take many forms. I'm thinking about the story of Spider-Man. What kind of stories do I really enjoy reading about him? And uh, a lot of the time, his stories are about determination through struggle. I've, I've seen that in a lot of the films, in a lot of the books. You know, he's a teenage kid who has these powers and it's not really an ordinary situation at all, is it? And so, he's always having... He's the little guy. He's always having to fight the big, bad, twisted, jaded adult characters. You know, the villains, the scientists who have gone too far. He's definitely pushing back against a force that he's a bit overwhelmed with here. The Sinister Six taking on Spidey. And I mean, we probably won't go with this one because primarily this image should be just about Spider-Man. I mean, if I have to draw seven characters, you know, you guys will probably want to know how to draw those other six, right? I mean, I would. So I think, as much as I just wanted to pen this down in a thumbnail, because it'd be cool, you can see the general idea is, like, to have all of his villains surrounding him. It's a bit of a cliché uh, scenario, too, I'd say. It's not, it's not hugely original. But look, seeing as we, uh, that'll do for now for that one. As soon as we've focused a lot in this video on gesturing for Spider-Man and then getting the right proportions for Spider-Man, I think we should just stick with doing something cool with him. Parker teaching Miles. Alright, what other kinds of stories can we come up with, huh? Yeah, I'm really liking that Miles Parker teaching one. That's a good one. You'll find that either in your first or second thumbnail for your story or for your piece. You'll, you'll think, ah, I'll just go with that. But I think it's worth just pushing on and maybe doing a couple more. In fact, just to go with the theme of six, you know, we've got six steps. We were talking about doing sinister six. I might time lapse through these and then show, you know, explain them after. All right? Before we move on, I just want to quickly make a couple of notes about these story ideas that I came up with through these uh, quick thumbnails. So over here, just thinking about how you can tell story and maximise that uh, uh, storytelling potential of your uh, Spider-Man piece, you need to be thinking about not just how many characters are in the scene or what actions they're doing, but also what's the state of them? Like, how damaged is Spider-Man's costume? Is half his mask ripped off, you know? In this scene, I thought he might even have his mask pulled off him by Doc Ock, you know? The, the arm could have pulled his mask off and you just see Peter turning away. So, yeah, think about that. Like, how many scars does he have? Has he been in a really serious battle or, or whatnot? Over here, I was just trying to create another kind of story where we've got Spider-Man trying to help Miles Morales, uh, who's just starting out. Maybe his uh, web shooters have just malfunctioned and he's trying to, you know, he's using his spidey sense and he's swooping in to catch him. Over here we've got a classic scene of just Spidey fighting Doc Ock. I just thought I could add something dynamic to it by um, having them, like, just smashing through a high-rise window. Just, they've been smashing through an office or something. 
Then over here we've got Fisk getting webbed up. And uh, we've got Miles and Spidey, like, at the end of the battle, just looking up at this gargantuan thug. And uh, just, uh, yeah, putting their arm on each other's shoulders and just being like, Hey, we did it. <laughs> Uh, but then I thought, no, no, there needs to be more action. But I wanna, I wanna, I wanna keep with the web shooters and stuff. So this one just has Spider-Man, no Miles in this one on the left. But uh, yeah, they got Mysterio, and he's got his his uh, fishbowl head is just completely covered in webbing. And I just thought it'd be cool to have his flowing cape. That'd be a nice, nice image there. So, what I wanted to do in the end, with the last thumbnail, is kind of combine these two, this one here and this one here, into one image. So, the idea of the web, the head getting all webbed up, uh, I kept that from, from, from this one. And uh, I chose Fisk as the bad guy, and we got Miles like kicking Fisk's feet out from under him, and Fisk is about to shoot a a gun down at Miles, but Spidey is up here uh, leaping on top of Fisk and webbing up that head of his. Uh, or, or even, I've got this little uh, ball of web here just shooting over and it's about to knock the gun away from him. So, I think out of all of them, this one has got three characters, so it's, it's um, you know, it's it's got a lot of dynamic action going on and a bit of storytelling as well. So. I think we can kind of combine a lot of what's going on in these other thumbnails into this one and yet make it a bit more simple, you know? Over here we had seven characters, um, here we had three characters but they weren't really doing much. This one has three characters who are doing quite a bit of exciting movement but it's also, it's, it's more manageable. So yeah, that's, this is uh, roughly the image I'm going to go for. And I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna do it on a nice big A3 piece of paper. Yeah, let's get onto it. The final illustration. I'm, I'm gonna show you what results from me going through this process and trying to create the best Spider-Man that I can. All right. And we'll ink it, we'll color it. It's gonna look sweet. All right, ladies and gentlemen, strap yourselves in. Let's start the engines of illustration. Oh, Jesus. All right, ladies and gentlemen, strap yourselves in. We're about to do art. So I thought I'd pause here just to point out a couple of things as I'm doing this drawing. There's some impromptu ideas as well coming up. I really like the crowbar idea and it's like, like it's hidden, you know, it's going behind his head. So it's sort of one layer of uh, foreshortening and then his head is the next layer and then his, his jacket is the next layer and then his hand, you know, and then the web. So like, there are multiple levels of foreshortening and like three-dimensionality of just Fisk standing there and the web in front trying to grasp, grasp onto the gun. But also I'm trying to create a big, you can see, like a flow.
this is an intense composition going on here. We've got lots of webs shooting about. And uh, once they're inked, I think you're going to see this entire image just come to life. And then, of course, the colours is just going to... Oh, magnifique. I'm really happy with uh, where this has landed so far. And uh, any errors that might be there, I can, yeah, sort them out as I'm inking. I will work on this little thing over here, though, and I'll see if I can surprise you with what that is. All right, cool. When I'm penciling my art, I do find music can be distracting just because I'm in the process of uh, concepting out and figuring out the story and how I want things. You know, there's a lot of technical thought and storytelling thought going on and so music can distract me or influence how, I, how the piece should really go. Uh, but when it comes to inking, uh, having on not like intense music but some nice chilled out music, I, uh, I find it really helps, so let's get into the inking and and uh, uh, we'll time lapse this thing through. All right. So I've finished up the inking, I'll just quickly erase the old pencils and then jump into the colouring. And with regards to the colouring, I want to just stick to the traditional colours of the different spider people and of uh, Wilson Fisk because uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Like that's what makes those characters extremely iconic is of course their design, their costumes, but also the colours. Like that is, you know, when you see red and blue and, and uh, you know, the spider logo of Spider-Man, you're like, oh, that's him, you know, that's like instant, like you know exactly who you're looking at. So, yeah, let's get into the colouring. Yeah, I was building on the lecture. 
verse is coming daily under pressure. Working on the plot and the scheme, the true style trademark is at the edge of your dreams. I'm talking one, one shot for the kill. The breeze cut, freeze up, straight drop in the chills. I'm talking. Taking over pieces and shares of all big sky high. Check the movement is here. Yeah, yeah. It's one heart, one shot. Now the future is yours. Go. I'm turning dreams into reality. In the lab with the formula and chemistry. The memories spark and motivate and make the industry shake. We put the balls in the brakes. I'm talking one. One chance at best, yes. Painting princes for the culture, keep the brushes fresh. Took the cover, broke the drum, a passion never rest. Freedom is our teacher under pressure, now we bless. See, I was so good for the go. It's one heart, one shot, now the future is yours. Go! Yeah! It's one heart, one shot, now the future is yours. Go! There you have it, guys. I've done the best Spider Man that I can do. And I. Uh, ended up doing this really dramatic, really uh, dynamic uh, pose and piece uh, with the three Spider-Man and Spider-Gwen as well. And then, of course, Wilson Fisk, the big, large gangster. I did this piece as my best Spider-Man art because I really needed to push myself to try drawing more than just some you know, hero character swinging through the sky. I needed to do something that has characters interacting, doing some sort of action, and telling some kind of story because I just haven't been doing enough of that lately. So that's how I sort of view this piece, is that I was pushing myself to do the best that I can in this area that I'm not pushing myself to have a go at often enough. I hope you guys are thoroughly inspired and, uh, have got a few tips here and there on how you can go out and do your best Spider-Man art. So if you really enjoyed this, please like the video and subscribe to the channel and I'll uh, catch you in the next video. Thanks guys. Have fun. Go out and do art. <laughs>